Hello and welcome. I'm Johnny B. And I'm the Restless Kaiser. Together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. Okay. I like the way that that's expanding. Advantage. I love it. <laughs> um, okay, so tonight, today, whatever you want, we're going to have a little look at the tanks. World War WW2. Was it a Panther versus Panther? Panther versus Sherman. Panther versus With the Sherman World War Two skirmish game. This is yeah. good. Yeah, this kit has been out for been out for quite a while. Has it? Yeah, yeah, a couple of years, I think. Um, it's their late war, and it was the first iteration of tanks. So we've done some videos oh, already of tanks modern. You've, you've come in at modern. You've come in at a different end. Yeah, and it was one of the reasons I was getting a few of the rules wrong. And um, I know this game reasonably well because I do this with the kids at the school I work in. In our, in our games club. Tanks is a great kind of introductory game. So I'm familiar with this kit, but John's not seen it. I've not seen inside this box and before. And there are some differences. So it's always worth talking, I think, about, about box art. So like box art. What we got? And on the box art, you have got an iconic Panther tank in the Dunkelgaub. 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 What's this? Zug, 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 zug. Stu uh, no, that's a Yag Panther, I think. Yag Panther. Yag Panther, which is uh, something you can also build from this kit. So, really? let's, have, let's have a look. Please. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice doing unboxings, which is not just my like sausage fingers. <laughs> it's got another human just your, here. Just your sausage face instead. Just my sausage face. What we got? We got some dice. John, my mother says something beautiful. Yeah. We got some dice. Yeah, you get you get twelve dice. Not six, like Three, the other one we did. Yeah, twelve. Because you need six dice for this game, specifically. Bunch of dice. cards. Pile of cards. This must be the German stuff. German yeah. sprues. Yeah, you get a German sprue for the Panther, or the Yag Panther. And then some allies. What allied we sprues. We get the Sherman the M4A3 sprue. And then, I'm going to have to tilt the box. Proper wedged. Come out. Proper wedged. Boom. I can go over there. While you fumble with the bits of card then, I will uh, have a look at the manual. So, this manual is quite good. It's it's fairly thick for a, for a flimsy game and the rules are fairly straightforward. But what's nice about it is it does kind of tell you the sort of tanks that you get in the range, explains how the cards and the tokens work, so, movement line of sight, loads of colour pictures, very few words. <laughs> See, it's like it was designed for you, mate. Mate, it's all yeah, for me. Thanks. Because I'm a, and, and even an idiot sheet on the back. Which is also say, for me. I'm a, I'm a big fan of tanks. I, I like I'm, painting I'm, little I'm tanks. It. I like having a big collection of tanks that only cost me a few quid each. <laughs> yeah, price point is uh, pretty darn good. And to on paint them. when they're that small, who cares? Right, so if we talk about the we talk about the other bits, and then we'll get to the sprues and the vehicles at the end, shall we? Okay, sprues and vehicles at the sprues end. Sprues and vehicles at the end. So what we got there? I'll with... just open those. So let's have a look, shall we, at the doofers that you get. Card tokens. There's some pretty good quality card stock, like a lot of their stuff. Really thick. You get all of the tokens needed. You get your damage markers, your objective markers. These movement tokens are quite important if you haven't played before. Let's see how that works. But what's really good is the cardboard scenery that you get in this. These little houses and Boop. so forth that punch out. They're double-sided in the roofs. This set really does contain everything you need to, to play on a kitchen table. You don't even need to use a saucepan or a book as a piece of cover because it's, it's got all there. scenery in 2D. it. And indeed, the basic game has scenery deployment rules which require you to use... Right. These, these particular bits of scenery, yeah, yeah. I'm liking this. Loads it's of nice, damage counters. Big we like, forest. We like more damage counters. More damage counters. Handy. Yeah, and a lot of this stuff is just straight duplicate uh, of the stuff we've already seen oh, in Tanks Modern. But I like you, that you haven't seen before. Are these tokens. It's ID counters. These are ID counters. Yeah. So the idea with these, if I just bring them closer up to the camera, this is like. Whoop, because in the modern, we have like A, B, C, and D. Is in that the bad? modern, you've got A, B, C, and D in blue I and red. this. This. Look at that. You've got actual tank markings. And the idea is you put one of these tank markings on a tank card. And then, and then you put one on the table. Amazing. So you don't clutter up the table with all the tokens. Yeah. I like it. Well. But. I do like it, in theory. But I increasingly feel... I'm just trying to get used to having tokens on table on the table. Yes. It doesn't look as nice, but as a player, when you look, you know what's it, what the circumstances are. Well, you need it for this, don't you? 
Especially I think, when you got all the... I think, I think for this, with the damage card, like we started putting the critical hit markers down next to the to the vehicle as yes, well, haven't we? we? Did, yeah. The card. For, for yeah. Gaming. So these are nice. And they are authentic, by the way. So these... British actual... These ones are British uh, tank troop markings. This is a Desert Rat. This is Guards Armoured. This is one of the American um, armoured divisions. I can't remember which. I'm um, looking so around there like that, but it's exactly it's, the same on the back, it's, guys. It's double-sided. Double yeah, and again, the same, same with the German ones and the Soviet ones, yeah. I've used those for modern. Well, obviously, without the certain ones, you wouldn't be able to without use, the but ones, look, I can use the Soviet ones. Use there, the Soviet ones, absolutely. And then, of course, you've got your range rulers. So this, but this is really good, thick card. You can see just where it's, it's cut in there. This stuff is going to last quite well. Um, and I think for a card that's going to require you to use the tokens... I think that's quite important, especially the rulers. Yes. These track me as, um, a friend of mine actually, Thanks Bill, on. is working on getting us some aluminium I saw rulers, that. I saw a little post on the... Aluminium. The yeah, because he does like, that. he's getting into 3D printing and, and milling of game tokens and stuff like that. He's got he's got a website, Slidey Tove Designs. I'll put a link down Ooh, in the big Oh, cheeky plug, cheeky plug. Cheeky plug, yeah. yeah so that's some really good card stock. Really good card stock there, yeah. Now we've yeah. got cards. Now we've got the cards. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. What's this? This is the crits and stuff. So it's critical hit new, deck. I yes. Guess. Well, it's, it's going to be a little bit different from tanks. I don't know whether the tank, whether the contents are the proportions. So you've still got like damaged engine, busted tracks, bailed out engine, fire, lucky hit. So that's all but they haven't got the similar. helicopter effects. Obviously, I, I didn't even know there were helicopter effects specifically in tanks modern there's a there's a lot like if it's a tank it's this if it's a you know, it's everything and then if it's a helicopter also this oh. so damaged engine in a helicopter has got other consequences for example maybe that it doesn't have maybe. for a tank all sorts of dudes here let's so start with some of the crew you got that's an allied baby richards for four points this tank may move once and initiative zero then move normal on its initiative do not count this extra movement when assigning the speed token. Four points is a hero card. So uh, I'm not sure who Baby Richards is, but he gets a move twice. Okay. Nice. I've but it is at right at the beginning. Bobby Wall, which is <laughs> a five point German dude. Uh, Bobby Wall. Bobby Wall, the gunner. I think he's a he's, gunner. I think he's Walt Whitman's gunner. He's an actual dude. Oh, these well, are real dudes. These are actual dudes. The, the hero ones are real dudes. Well, that's correct. I think... You've heard of this one. I think he... Is he German? I Tank think he might be Walt yeah, Whitman's gunner. Yeah, he actually says it. Michael Whitman's gunner. Yeah. There you go. Not Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman's somebody else. Michael <laughs> Whitman. Michael Whitman, yeah. Michael that's what Whitman, you said, the, right? I'm sure you said that. The, the, the target is. Nice. Whitman's tiger is a thing. Anyway, this dude is a five-point dude, and he's got... If this tank scores an uncancelled hit or critical hit with its first attack, you can shoot again with a three power against a new target within a measuring stick of the first. So if they're tightly packed, you can just <laughs> slap some shells yeah, in. That's uh, with only firepower three. That's not as good as you might think. Well, agreed. Yeah, we've seen that. But it's firepower still three. cheeky little, cheeky little extra cheeky shot. Little three, especially yeah. if you've got. And you only need to score. One, one hit. Uncancelled yeah. hit or crit. Yeah. Uh, this is another allied one. Jailbird Boggs. Plus one firepower loader. Take it to the bank. Firepower is everything in this game. For the win. Which is why this guy is six points. And he is going on a Sherman. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Well, we've only got, oh, we've we've only got, got Shermans, Shermans yeah. in a box. This guy would probably do a lot better with a Pershing or <laughs> something like that. Um, yeah, all right. I don't think we should go through no, all of these. Okay, you got another gunner there, and you got another commander there. We'll see those with some steals. Yeah. And then we got what we got. Is this standard? A couple of commanders. Is you got Michael normal? Vittman. 11 points. Tell, tell you about Michael Vittman, because he's probably the most famous tanker yes. in history. Michael sure. Vittman, uh, if you don't know, um, was an extremely famous uh, tank ace of the German army. Um, indeed, at one point, I think he's he's credited with the destroying a submarine. What? But a submarine what? in like near near the shore. This is like oh, okay, no, where I'm the eastern the shore, front. Okay. But no, submarines spend a lot of their time on the surface. All right. Most of their time. As yeah. You do. I don't know how apocryphal that is, but a really high high score, and, and he was present during the Normandy campaign and was a, a horrific opponent. So Michael Vittman gets plus two initiative and plus one firepower. 
and it doesn't stop there. This tank rerolls failed attempts to repair, build out, and stun crew effects. Whoa. 11 points. Worth it, though. Well, it is if you've got something really beefy that you can stick it on. If you've got to stick that on a Panzer III or something, that's going to be a waste of points. But if you stick that on a Tiger, <laughs> might be getting your points worth. Vitamin's Tiger! Yeah. And then um, you've, got, you've got loads equipment, of equipment, equipment, blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. Absolutely. I mean, we're not, we're not going to go through all of these. There's, there's a lot of them. But it's nice that you it's get some heroes, to see you do get heroes in there. Is it only American and German? Yeah. So you get some uh, hero crews for the armies that are in this box. That's well, bloody helpful, isn't it? Yeah. And from the expansion kits, I think every one of the tank expansions contains a hero. This has got different stuff. This has got different tanks. You've got, uh, you've got Sherman 75 mil, Sherman yep. 76 mil, possibly another card stuck underneath that. Yes, there is. Pershing, as you said. Gung ho! Sherman 75, Sherman 76. Super Pershing. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not sure that either of those tanks actually made it into action. Did they not? They might have done. Sherman 5? Sherman 5. So, how does the Sherman 5 compare with the Sherman 75? Wow. That's quite the difference. So the Sherman 5, which is... An which one's the more recent in, in sort of... Or are they, well, it depends. Are they, okay. The Sherman 5... So this is the M4A4. Right. That's the, the M4A3. So the Sherman the 75 is the M4A3. But the Sherman 75 has the American one. Costs five points more. But has six initiative and six hit points. The British one has five initiative and four hit points. Oh, wow. I do not know why that should be the case. Unless this is supposed to be the up-armoured version. Maybe. Don't know. And the Sherman 76. Or is that is that price coming in because of the going high? I understand the relationship between the price and the stats. It's why this is so, is so much different. more powerful from, than the British one. It's the same friggin' tank, right? Well... Well, sort of. Okay, or not. I'll let you carry on with that. Presumably it had thicker armour. So that's the Yanks version. Oh, yeah. there's, sorry, there's a Sherman Firefly there as well. Yeah, so the Firefly has a stat the British. similar to the Sherman 5, except it has 5 firepower and has 5 hit points instead of 4. I think these are all M4A1s. I think these were built in the earlier ones. And they have to take the front machine gun out to make room for the ammunition for that. Because the Firefly is basically Why one of these, gone? but with a 17-pounder in it. Oh. So you get you get British and you get American ones. What else do we get? Got some here? other British here. Cromwell. Yeah. Comet. Uh, and then we've got some German ones. We've got Stug G. Panzer IV. Jag Panther. Some Soviets too. T-34. Mm. T-34 slash 85. That's the upgun version, up yeah. Upgunned. Boom ting, it is. Uh, SU-85, it's one of them there assault gun doofers. Uh, SU-100. Yeah, I think it's just a different gun size. That's it. Is it I mean, the chassis same, changes same chassis. to accommodate. No, no, no. It looks I think the chassis the same. gets bigger. It looks same, the same style. They might be. It's whacking great guns, isn't it? An IS-85. Yes. IS-2. Joseph Stalin tanks. ISU-122, another sort of variant of assault gun there. Slightly different chassis. And an ISU-152. Okay, you get a whole whacking great bunch of cards. So you don't get everything that's available in the range. You certainly don't get everything that you could have for tank, uh, for Flames of War. But these, I think these vehicles represent what was available in the original release. Ah. In plastic. Right. Because in tank, in Flames of War, there's still a lot of metal and resin and mixed metal and resin kits. Whereas tanks is a hundred percent plastic single sprue. Don't forget the panther. Don't forget the panther. Stuck. You've got a bit sticky. So those those are the those are the tanks. So nice you get these Americans. So well, you the ones we get in the box. It's well, funny enough, it's a panther versus Sherman. Panther so versus Sherman. So I'm going to get the old panther out there because I want to see some stuff here. So what have we got? Panthers rocking seven initiative. It's got yep. five firepower, two armor, and six hull points, as it were. 32 points. Rocking in 32 points. Blitzkrieg. This tank may make a single move instead of making a repair damage roll in the command phase. So, tanks, Panda vs. Sherman, is different. earlier, an earlier version of the game than tanks modern. Right. So you'll see this one's got Blitzkrieg, the American one's got Gung Ho. Gung Ho. That's actually the national characteristic. 
So you know how we have that card in text well, on, like the, the Berlin Brigade and, yeah. and the Red Banner? This is that. This is that. Yes, yeah, so all the British ones have something called semi-indirect right. fire. So the Blitzkrieg is basically, if they don't make a repair move, they're going to have a free move in that command step, the German ones. Whereas the American ones count one less speed token when firing. That's handy. That's quite, uh, that's quite powerful. Only when firing, but not for... That doesn't affect their defence then, does it? No, no. Yeah, OK. I don't believe so. I wouldn't have thought so, one less move otherwise. when calculating its target's defence dice, yeah. It's not. It's not a. It's about the same. Well, it's kind no. of gung ho, but not anyway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so twenty and twenty-five. So in the straight Panther versus Sherman, assuming you got this kit, you built yourself two Sherman seventy-sixes, which cost you fifty points, and then you built a Panther thirty-two. Slap Whitman in there. Slap Whitman in there. And his his little mate. Yeah. Bert, or whatever it was. Your firepower is the same. Your yes. hit points is the same. Yes. You've only Slightly got one extra point in armor, armor, but you do it's have the initiative. That seven initiative. And we yeah. know, well, yeah, we know from playing that modern, the initiative is quite important. But there's another option. Because you, you can build option. the Yag Panther, which I didn't get the card. The Yag Panther. It's an option. That is a proper option. The Yag Panther. So, what have we got here? 35 point tank. Salt gun, Blitzkrieg, obviously. Uh, initiative six. Mm, not so sure about so that. Initiative six is going to cause you a problem. Yeah. Because you're not always going first. Yeah. It's got firepower of six, though. So that's firepower slightly six. upgunned over the Sherman 76. Yeah. Still got two armor, six hit points. So, I mean, three points more, you get An one less initiative, but one extra firepower. But you're also forward firing. I don't think it's worth using the Jag Panther for that. You don't think it's worth using I the Jag really Panther? I don't. No. For, for what you lose, losing that initiative just to gain an extra dice, yeah, I mean, it's great, but assuming you've got two vehicles, surely you're just going to flank round. Well, if they buy, if the Americans have a pair of these, we're waffling there again, aren't we? We're not waffling, because the intention is we're going to play this. So we are going to play this, and we're already thinking it out. But it is a bit The Americans waffling, yeah. go straight up 76s for 50 points, mm. and you take the Yag Panther, you've got 15 points worth of upgrades. You take Whitman, we make it, viable. and you're on initiative eight, seven oh, firepower. Okay, I, I take my previous statement. I retracted, sir. I'm going to take a Yag Panther with <laughs> Mr. Whitman. You're going to take a Yag Panther with Whitman. But the thing is, Je uh, John, we talked about the um, Africa setting, yes, the North Africa campaign. That's what we're aiming for, and and that's going to be the kind of main development over the next for, few yeah. months on the channel. And you're taking the Germans in there. I am. So, for the, I need to the late no, war, no, 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 I don't think you're going to get to decide, I'm going to be the Germans. Yeah, well, I'm going to take Whitman and the Jag Panther for our test again. Yeah, but I'm old. All right. Seven firepower. Yeah. I'm going to come at you, man, like Brad Pitt. You're going to come at me like Brad Pitt? I'm going to come at you like Brad and Pitt. And lose all of your tanks, lose I believe. Lose all I'm my tanks on the way, but I'm still going to get you. Yeah, yeah, by getting behind me. Yeah. Mate, I'm going to shoot your logs off. <laughs> You do that. All right, let's talk about the sprues <laughs> now. Because I think the sprues, the thing with the with these kits and a lot of these box sets, the thing that really makes a difference to you, I think, is can I use the vehicles that I've already got? Which particular Shermans are these and which particular tanks are Go on they? in. Have a so, We Honestly. get two of the M4A3 Sherman sprue. This is the kind of mid to late war American tank, which is a... 2014 sprue so if you've bought plastic wow. shermans from battlefront that were american not british you've probably seen this sprue already mm. this sprue i think it's fantastic because this sprue has got a lot of different options on it one of the more curious features you get the little collins hedge cutter Yay! i love those the rhino ram the rhino ram and they called them rhinos so the idea with this, the Bacard problems that they were having in, um, in Normandy, I was, it, it's, not, it's not just the hedges, it's this thick hedgerow country. It's over a big bank yeah. of earth. Yep. Um, and the tanks couldn't get through it, and the infantry couldn't see over it or get through it. So they found out just by sticking this in, the tank could force its way through and make That's a hole for the infantry. Crazy. Yeah, so the Collins hedge cutter. Um, you know, we've got the running gear, which is very common to a lot of their stuff now. Um, where it, oh, the tracks, the wheels, it's all in a single piece. There's no assembly required there. And they're even uh, keyed on the back, so you can't put them on the wrong way around. 
and that's a really good feature again. Oh yeah, two and a three. You know, because sometimes if you don't know what you're doing, you might end up with it, a backwards. You put the dry sprocket at the wrong end Oops. or whatever. Yeah, and then realise that after the glue's dried. So you've got that, and that's probably my only criticism of this kit. Is is the way that they have put the and they do this a few times. Put attached to the tracks to the sprue. Because the way that the tracks are attached to the sprue, oh. it's at the front of the track rather than at the back of the track. So you're going to have to deal with these mould lines. And when you're cleaning that up, it is going to cut so into the mean, track link. You're going to take some of the. There's no getting away the from that. Off. Which is a shame. But when you've painted them up, you can barely tell. Yeah. But again, with a little bit more forethought, that this could have been attached at the other side of the tracks. And then any defect would be at the other side. Yeah, I mean, even if hidden. it was just on that little plate section there. Absolutely. They could, they could make other choices. Go on. Anyway. But I think this was one of their earlier plastic frames. 2014, as we know. Yeah. But what's really good about this you is all of the of things. Stuff. In the instructions, it's going to tell you how to build a 76 or a 75. But actually, you get two complete turrets. The lower and upper part of the turret. And more than one cupola option. And more than one mantlet. And more than one gun. Yeah, you can build this in several different ways. But you can also build each tank model as two different tanks. The smaller turret houses the standard 75. which all, But it also takes the 105 mil howitzer. Which is the flat short barrel here. Oh, okay. Which isn't available on most of the other Sherman kits. Really? No. Not the not the howitzer version. These are not that common. And then this this very different shaped turret, which is a much more recognisable seventy six mil turret. But even with that, there's different mantler options for different versions. And there's even one of the bits that I like this um, this plate on the front here. This is the, you can make the up-armoured Sherman. Now, I'm not sure whether this is like an officially up-armoured Sherman or whether this is just part of the process that American tankers were quite keen on customising their vehicles. So if they found a, you know, a Tiger on the roadside, oh, really? they'd just, just get strip their, it down? They'd just strip it down and like weld a plate of Tiger. Is that this we're looking at? This, this yeah. literal plate? Yeah, this plate here. They'd just weld the plates to the front of the tank. Bonk. Yeah. So there's several different tank versions that you can build. You also get nice... You even get two full turret pegs. And I was talking about being able to build two completely separate turrets. Yeah, they yeah. completely catered for all completely of that. Completely catered for all of that. You get um, three... Three mach roof machine guns. Boom, boom, and Two boom. of which go pegged straight into the turret rings. One of which is an additional anti-aircraft machine gun on its own mount. Which is in the middle here. Yeah. Hopefully you can see that on one of the stills. Um... I don't know which versions of it had more than one roof mounted machine gun. I'm putting them all on. But then you're just sticking them all on. All of them. Sticking them all on. I'm going to take the ones off of that sprue and put them on this one. So with a little bit little bit of work, you can you can do lots of different things with this. I like it. So because this isn't a new sprue, I do actually have some of these for you to look at. Ooh. You want to bring them over? Not that anyone can see. Not that anyone so will see, but they one. will see in the stills. That's two. So to give you an indication, I've built these two vehicles i may at some point do a painting video on these but it's pretty straightforward stuff this um i'm still waiting on some decals unfortunately so there's no weathering gone onto these but this is the 75 as you can see and this one i've built with the howitzer turret and just to thing, prove the point couple of options here there's the one with brad pitt in it and there's the other one so these are the two completely additional turrets they are tiny with little the spare dogs. Machine guns. I do have some commanders in those because I do have other flames of war stuff. Yeah, yeah. So sure. um, I was able to just stick a couple of commanders in there because what you don't get in this box, sadly, you don't get decals again. Yeah. And you don't get commander sprues. Mm. The commander sprues, I'm not terribly bothered. If you buy any of their starter kits, you get a load of commander sprues and there are others. So you're likely going to have some knocking about anyway. And you don't need many. But decals really lift, especially on the Allied vehicles. Yeah, like proper pop. The Allied vehicles, they just don't They're have... Just there's so much a dry brush can do for you. 
Oh, the German ones then, John. Got some Germans. Got some Germans. That is a Panther. So this is the Panther. Which again, I have stuck a German crewman in from. Uh, but this is the model that you get, which we'll look at the sprue off in a moment. As you can see, really nice late war Panther. That's quite a big. And then there's the Jagd. And then the Yard Panther. Yeah, I'm fine. I've done with this one. It's just to really upset John. I don't know if you see. I put well, I've the, got, I've got I put the decals this. on. This is quite nice. How close de can we get? A decal on there. With it focusing. There's a decal. It's not particularly focused, but you can see that, the positioning there. And then you flip it. Are you ready, guys? That was pretty central. Then, <laughs> he sticks one on the back. Why? I did it to annoy John. You the decals are not equal on bombed. both sides, and it's going to really bother him. Those decals are actually from a, a 28 mil. I wanted well, to see what they, they look like. They work on that, I think. Panther. Well, I don't know whether do I need they? to take them off. Well, you do. Well, you need to take one off because it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm leaving it because it's going to wind you up forever. So, shall we have a look at this through then? Yes, please. Because you can build this. Although it's just Panther versus Sherman, you can build it as either you only Panther. You get one, right? You only get one the tank. one. We get the one tank. It's a big double sprue because again, you can build lots of different versions. But what's more interesting about this one, or well, easier about this one, is all of these different versions. I don't think make any difference in the game. Having a Sherman seventy-five or a Sherman seventy-six, that's different. Having a Sherman hundred and five, that's different. The different variations of the Panther, I think, have all got the same stats. Just all, yeah, they just come out same different factories at different times. So looking at this sprue, then. Um, the lower hull and the running gear is is the same for all yeah. or for both the oh, Panther and the Yag Panther. Same with the rear plate. Um, there is the option for the um, hull mounting machine gun, and that's probably the most annoying piece on this model. This the hull mounting machine gun is this tiny tiny piece here, and it is extremely difficult to get out without breaking. Think I'm oh. not entirely sure how you'd approach that. I want to say that there are yeah, there's three. <laughs> so they've they've accounted for the fact that you're likely going to on this additional sprue. There's another two of them. But the thing is that on this one, it's even worse. The 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 way that they're attached to the sprue, you're going to find it very difficult to get those out without having to put some pressure on on wow. it. Um, and I think it's a shame. They do try and compensate for this um, battlefront in their in their designs. In that they give you multiple machine guns yes, in most so of the kits. Yes, so if you break it, so if you do break it, yeah, how absolutely. Kind, how very kind. So. Yeah. So the, your main sprue is this one. You've got your lower hull, which is going to be the same, and your rear plate, and so forth. But then you choose. It's the top plate, isn't it? Quite the quite upper, radically the different. Upper hull and deck is totally different for your Yag Panther and your Panther. Obviously, the turret here then attaches through. Your gun barrels are on the other sprue. The big one is for the Yag Panther. And, and it's, a, it's a really good illustration when you're looking at this of why self-propelled guns or tank destroyers or assault guns, depending on what you're going, what is it that they bring to the I mean, battlefield? How, uh, just comparing these two side by side, looking at that, and this is a beefy version of a Sherman, is it not? The Sherman Considering 76. 76. Okay, yeah. so that's as big as it's going to get. And then you put that beside a Yag Panther. Yeah. Mate, it's the length of yeah, the freaking Sherman. Yeah, but if, you, if you put them on scales, you'll see that they're quite different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you see just the size of this gun. By getting rid of all that weight that you get in the turret of a, of a tank, giving it that traverse capability, as soon as you remove that weight, you can mount a much bigger gun. If it's if it's in a fixed firing position, um, and they're really profoundly different in size on this, despite already being quite big guns, um, yeah. So that's that. So you probably could, with a lot of effort, well, not with a lot of effort, but with a bit of fire, top hole. you could probably magnetize the two different top holes yeah. because I don't think that there's any duplication. There's the, in fact, there isn't. Now, if I'm thinking about it, there are different hatches and a different size of hatch. For the top of the Yag Panther to the Panther, the, the Panther's uh, cupola is already built in, whereas they're just hatches on the top of the ah. Yag Panther. Um, and the gun is mounted in this little recess piece here. So you could mount, you could create the two different top holes and interchange them and maybe put a magnet in. For me, 
And the skirts that are different. Do you get two sets of skirts? You have at least two sets of skirts. Yeah, but they I'm look not different. Cause yeah, I'm but I'm not sure that that's for whether it's a panther or a yag panther, or whether it's just there's this type and there's that type mm. of, of different ages. Okay, I might be wrong in that respect. Um, yeah, so that's those. There is also on here which is something that doesn't explain to you. The thing with these tank kits and their instructions, they're quite simple. They're intended for you to make a particular version of a tank, mm. which suits the, the fitting. And even if you did have the different versions, the stats wouldn't be different in tanks in the way that they might in Flames of War. You've got all these tiny little bits here, which are part of the um, infrared equipment. The what? Towards the end of the Second World War, people are experimenting with night vision equipment. Oh. And there are versions of late war German tanks that are equipped with night vision equipment, which is infrared That's stuff. That's crazy. And these are the three different lamps that fit and different places in the vehicle. It doesn't tell you in the instructions where they are Some or what they're for. Aesthetic. And I think that there's maybe like a dozen of them in the whole of the German army. Because it, 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 didn't, it didn't work. I mean, it worked in terms of it would show up. It would... Reveal, expose things in infrared so you could see in the dark. But it also meant you had three big red lamps on yeah. your tank in the dark. <laughs> What's that? It's like you are more obvious than whatever yeah. you're looking at. Uh, but these are the early iterations of the equipment. Um, but yeah, you can build either of those two tanks. And if you're happy to have a little bit of uh, a little bit of faff, you could potentially have both. That's not bad going. So we're going to take these away and we're going to get them built up. We're gonna play. I think we're gonna play an out of the box battle. We'll I, just I play like with it. the with the what you get in the kit. Yes, please. So, I'll, I'm gonna take the Germans oh, in this setting, a... and you're gonna take the Americans because you like that Fury move. Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. That's all right. And you I showed it to, to be you showed me like five minutes of it, and yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, no, yeah. that's that's. Not. I loved it, and you were like, what are they doing? <laughs> that is not how you fight from the tank. <laughs> I have no military experience. But you I've know only read off. books. You know I know off. that okay. driving tanks straight at an enemy tank that they can't defeat frontally when there's a group of them it was is a really it was bad only idea. A tiger. Shh. And what Brad a tiger Pitt. is doing, wandering about on its own. Oh, the list goes on. And I only saw five minutes of the film. Anyway, guys, so that's basically the little unboxing review of the Panther vs. Sherman. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.